From the outside, everything seemed perfect, but behind closed doors it was a different story. I took a deep breath, stealing myself for another typical morning. Jordan sat at the head of the table, scanning today's newspaper, barely looking up when I set his plate down. You're home all day. Why is the house never clean? Jordan's voice broke the brittle silence. I clenched my jaw, but kept my tone even. There's a lot to do, Jordan, especially with Lila. Don't use Lila as an excuse, he snapped, eyes still glued to the paper. It's not that hard. Mom, where's my lunch? Lila's voice brought a momentary respite from the tension. I handed her the lunchbox with a forced smile. I've got it right here, sweetie. I knelt down to fix a loose strand of hair. Have a great day at school. Lila hugged me tight before running out to catch the bus. I stood slowly, feeling the weight of Jordan's gaze now fixed on me. When are you going to stop pampering her? She needs to learn independence, he said, his tone low but razor sharp. She's just nine, Jordan. She'll grow up soon enough. His sneer curled, a habitual display of his disdain. Sure, if you say so. I returned to the kitchen, the silence hanging heavy between us. The sound of clinking dishes echoed as I cleaned up. I avoided his eyes, stirring my coffee absent-mindedly. The facade we presented to the world was intact, but the reality was this constant friction, this perpetual dance of tension and disapproval. Jordan stood suddenly, pushing his chair back with an exaggerated scrape. I'm heading to the office. Try to make yourself useful today. The door slammed behind him, rattling the picture frames on the wall. I sighed, pressing my temple. Later in the day, after tending to the house and catching up on emails, I picked up Lila from school. Her cheerful chatter was a welcome distraction. How was your day, sweetheart? Good. Miss Parker said I'm doing great in math. She thinks I can join the advanced class next month. My heart swelled with pride. That's amazing. We'll celebrate tonight, okay? Dinner was a quieter affair. Lila spoke excitedly about her lessons and friends, her joy unshadowed by the earlier morning squabbles. Jordan returned late, barely offering a grunt as he sat down, his attention drifted more to his overflowing work bag than to us. Dad, guess what? Miss Parker said I can join the advanced math class. Lila's eyes sparkled with hope. Jordan gave a curt nod. That's nice, Lila. Keep up the hard work. He turned to me, eyes narrowing. Vivian, there's a seminar out of town next week. I'll be gone for three days. I nodded, forcing a smile. Of course. After Lila went to bed, I cleaned up, my movements automatic. The house echoed with emptiness despite us both being there. Jordan's eyes followed me, cold and assessing. Why do you look so tired all the time? If you can't handle the house, maybe you should start acting more responsibly. I turned to him, my patience finally thinning. I'm doing everything I can, Jordan. Maybe you could help instead of criticizing. A silence stretched before he spoke, his voice a low, dangerous murmur. Watch your tone. Don't forget who makes all this possible. I turned away, my hands shaking. We had started this journey with dreams and promises, but now it felt like walking on broken glass. Every interaction with Jordan sliced pieces of my spirit, but I endured for Lila. As I lay in bed that night, I heard Jordan's hushed conversation on the phone in the living room, his laughter hollow and unfamiliar. I swallowed hard, feeling a tear slip down my cheek. The perfect facade was just that, a facade. No one saw the cracks unless they looked closely, and soon enough those cracks would become impossible to ignore. I remember the day I quit my job vividly. It was two months after the wedding, and Jordan sat me down at the kitchen table. Vivian, we need to talk he said, folding his hands like a CEO about to fire an employee. I took a seat, sensing something serious. What's on your mind? I think it's best for you to stop working. We need someone to take care of the house and, eventually, our kids. That should be you. I blinked, taken aback. But why? I love my job, Jordan. I worked hard to get there. He leaned forward, eyes hard. Exactly, and now our family needs you to work hard here. You don't have a choice. It's what's best for us. I reluctantly agreed, convincing myself it was for the better. Jordan's insistence felt like compromise, hidden behind a facade of concern. Things deteriorated quickly after that. Jordan's controlling nature surfaced more often, his voice a constant reminder of my narrowed world. One morning I broached the subject again. Jordan, I'd like to find a part-time job, something small, maybe a few hours a week. His reaction was immediate and sharp. 
stay-at-home moms working part-time? That's just an excuse to get out and cheat. Are you planning to cheat on me, Vivian? Of course not. I just miss working, feeling productive. You have plenty of work right here, he said, gesturing broadly to the house. And don't even think about arguing. This is final. Days turned into weeks, and the strain tugged harder at the edges of our lives. I tried to speak with him about sharing the chores. Jordan, could you help with Lila's homework tonight? Just this once? He barely glanced up. That's your job. Deal with it. Frustration boiled inside. It's not just my job. She's our daughter, and I need some help. He smirked. My job is to provide. Your job is to support me by taking care of the house. We each have our roles. I felt any hope slipping through my fingers. Conversations ended before they started, each attempt quashed by his domineering presence. One evening, after another tense dinner, I decided to push back. Jordan, this isn't how it should be. We're supposed to be a team. His face darkened. Teams have leaders, and I'm the leader here. Don't forget that. I bit my tongue, retreating into the silence. The pattern was clear. Any step I took forward was met with a wall of resistance. The isolation grew. Old friends faded away as our lives became consumed with Jordan's overbearing expectations. He picked at everything. How the meals were cooked, how the laundry was folded, how the house was cleaned. Nothing was ever good enough. On a rare visit to my sister Emily's place, I finally voiced my frustrations. Emily, I feel like I'm drowning. Jordan's got me trapped. Emily looked at me with worry. Vivian, you need to talk to him. This isn't okay. I've tried, but he shuts me down every time. Then you need to find another way. Don't let him control you like this. Her words lingered, a small lifeline in the overwhelming tide of Jordan's demands. Returning home, I steeled myself, determined to reclaim some semblance of independence. But the cycle continued, each day blending into the next, filled with Jordan's cutting remarks and impossible expectations. Months passed, and every attempt to bring balance to our lives was met with Jordan's iron fist. Yet, in the quiet moments, a resolve began to grow within me. The picture-perfect life we presented to the outside world was a lie, and the time was coming to face that truth head-on. The perfect facade was starting to crack, and I knew it wouldn't be long before everything shattered. One dreary afternoon, after sorting through the laundry, I noticed Jordan had left his laptop open on the kitchen table. The faint sound of an email notification drew me closer. My fingers hesitated over the touchpad, a knot twisting in my stomach. Curiosity got the better of me, and I clicked the new message. It was from Naomi, one of his co-workers. The subject line read, Last night. I clicked it open, my heart pounding. The contents were gut-wrenching. Had an amazing time with you. Can't wait for our next trip, it read, sprinkled with heart emojis. My hands trembled. Jordan walked in unexpectedly. What are you doing with my laptop? His voice was icy. I turned the screen towards him, eyes blazing. Who's Naomi? He barely flinched. She's just someone from work. You're imagining things. Imagining things, I repeated incredulously. This email says otherwise. Amazing time. Next trip. How could you? He shrugged, nonchalant. It's not what you think. Relax, Vivian. The nonchalance in his voice added fuel to my anger. Relax, you're cheating on me, and you tell me to relax? He raised an eyebrow, a smirk forming. Calm down, you always overreact. It's your problem, not mine. The selfishness, the manipulation in his words cut deep. Our problem, Jordan. Our marriage? You promised? Did any of that mean anything to you? Jordan scoffed, shaking his head. Stop being so dramatic, it's just harmless fun. You're blowing this out of proportion. Harmless? Fun? To you, maybe? But to me? My voice broke. You've shattered my trust. He leaned closer, his tone dropping to a merciless whisper. You should be grateful I even bother coming home. You're lucky to have me. Fury coursed through me. For years I'd put up with the belittling, the control. But this, this was unforgivable. You're despicable, I hissed. He chuckled, pulling the laptop away. And you're overly sensitive. This ends now, Vivian. Go back to your chores. I stared at him, disbelief mingling with an emerging resolve. This won't end the way you think, Jordan. The encounter marked a turning point. I avoided him after that, focusing all my energy on Lila and the house, my mind working on an escape plan. One evening, after tucking Lila into bed, I sat alone in the living room with my thoughts. Jordan's dismissive attitude, his betrayal, ignited something within me. I needed a way to regain control. 
to show him I wasn't the submissive wife he had molded me into. Late into the night, I searched online for support groups and stumbled upon blogs written by women in similar situations. An idea took root. By sharing my story, I could find strength. And maybe, just maybe, I could turn the tide. I set up a simple blog, anonymous but real, and began documenting the daily struggles, the facade, the truth. The first post felt like lifting a weight off my chest. Days turned into nights of secret writing, my audience growing slowly but steadily. The comments and messages from others offered solace. Stay strong, Vivian, one message read. You're not alone. Those words fueled my resolve. Jordan's unmasking had begun, and I was determined to reclaim my life. The perfect facade was crumbling, and the real battle had just started. Every evening after Lila was asleep, I poured my heart out on the anonymous blog. The responses were a lifeline, a validation of my feelings. I created this secret world where I could finally express my truth without fear. One day, while Jordan was at work, I received a message from an online follower. Vivian, your strength inspires me. Keep fighting. The support warmed my heart, reminding me I wasn't alone in my struggles. Jordan's behavior hadn't improved. If anything, he became more insufferable, especially when I mentioned needing help around the house. One evening, I dared to bring up chores again. Jordan, can you take out the trash tonight? He glanced up from his phone, face hardening. With what you do all day, you can't even manage the trash. It's not just the trash, Jordan, there's so much more. Can't you see that? He stood up, towering over me. I see laziness. I see excuses. You spend all day at home. What do you even do? Anger bubbled up. I take care of Lila, the house, everything. I'm asking for a little help. Is that too much? He laughed, the sound devoid of any humor. Help? You're pathetic, Vivian. You can't even handle simple tasks. I turned away, my hands trembling, focusing on my blog later that night. The support kept growing, and sharing my daily battles fortified my resolve to fight back. One evening while Jordan was out, I dug through an old photo album. It felt like another life, those happy early days. As I turned the pages, the contrast between then and now was stark. I found a picture of us at the beach, both smiling, holding hands. I traced the edges, remembering the warmth of those moments, now long lost. The next day, as I cleaned, I heard Lila calling from her room. Mom, can you help with my homework? I went up, sitting beside her. What are you working on? Math problems. Can you show me how to solve these? I patiently explained the steps, her eyes lighting up with understanding. Thanks, Mom, she said, hugging me tight. Her simple gratitude was a stark contrast to Jordan's never-ending demands. As the weeks passed, I kept writing, my secret blog becoming an empowering outlet. One night, after a particularly harsh day with Jordan, a message popped up. Vivian, you deserve better. Keep going. You're stronger than you think. I wiped away a tear, feeling a renewed sense of purpose. The next morning, as Jordan prepared to leave for work, he turned to me. I have a co-worker dropping by tonight. Make sure dinner is ready on time. Who's coming over? Naomi. She's new at work and needs to discuss a project. My blood ran cold at the name. Keeping my voice steady, I said, I'll prepare something special. When Jordan left, I sat down, breathing deeply. I needed to be prepared for whatever came next. Late that evening, Naomi arrived, a professional demeanor masking her true role in Jordan's life. Dinner was tense, the conversation forced. Jordan seemed unfazed, conducting himself like nothing was amiss. After dinner, as we sat in the living room, Jordan abruptly turned to me. Vivian, I've decided. We're getting a divorce. Naomi's eyes widened, looking between us. I clenched my fists, my mind racing. Is this why you brought her here? To announce your decision in front of her? Jordan's calm mask slipped for a moment. I wanted you to hear it from me directly. This isn't working. Naomi looked uncomfortable, but Jordan's words hung heavily in the air. I stood, my voice steady but filled with unspoken fury. Fine, Jordan. If this is how you want it, then let's get it over with. The cracks in our facade were now wide open, and the next steps would determine everything. As I stared at Jordan, I knew my plan needed to be flawless. And it would be. He had no idea what was coming. The morning after Jordan's announcement, I sat by my laptop, staring at the blank screen. My blog followers deserved to know, but I needed to be careful. As I began typing, raw emotions flowed. Behind each word was a plan forming, a way to expose Jordan for who he truly was, Jordan came home earlier than usual that night. 
Naomi will be stopping by again tomorrow, he said, not even glancing at me. Make sure it's less awkward this time. I kept my voice even. Of course, he nodded, satisfied. Good, I expect you to be on your best behavior. The next evening, Naomi arrived promptly. Jordan, acting as if nothing was out of the ordinary, served wine and started discussing work. Naomi tried to follow, but kept stealing glances at me, sensing the underlying tension. Jordan, I interrupted, hoping to catch him off guard. Why don't you tell Naomi more about our family? Jordan's eyes narrowed. What are you getting at, Vivian? I smiled sweetly. Just making conversation. Jordan ignored my provocation. Naomi, let's go over those reports again. While they talked shop, I discreetly excused myself. Upstairs, I grabbed my phone and accessed my blog. With a few taps, I published a post detailing the dinner and Jordan's announcement. I knew my followers would quickly spread the word. Downstairs, I returned to the table, my expression calm. The phone pinged with notifications, each one a small victory. Naomi looked up from her discussion with Jordan. Vivian, are you okay? A lot. I locked eyes with her, just pre preparing for what's coming next. Jordan frowned, sensing something amiss. Vivian, what's that supposed to mean? The doorbell rang, interrupting the tense atmosphere. It was a delivery, unplanned but oddly timed. Jordan answered the door, returning with a letter. What's this? Read it, I said, keeping my voice neutral. He tore open the envelope, his eyes scanning the contents. His face darkened. This is nonsense. Naomi leaned closer. What is it? I looked directly at her. It's proof of every lie, every betrayal. I've been documenting everything, and it's going public. Naomi's hand flew to her mouth. You did what? Jordan's rage boiled over. You're insane, Vivian? You think you can just expose me? You'll pay for this. I leaned back, feeling a cold satisfaction. It's too late, Jordan. The truth is out there. You can't control me anymore. He spun towards Naomi, desperate, desperate. She's lying. It's all lies. Naomi stood, her chair scraping back loudly. I don't know what's going on between you two, but I can't be a part of this. She grabbed her bag and headed for the door, throwing one last glance over her shoulder. You need help, Jordan. Jordan's eyes turned back to me, full of venom. You're going to regret this. I stood tall, meeting his gaze. No, Jordan. You're the one who will regret it. The night ended in silence, Jordan retreating upstairs, defeated. The next morning I received an outpouring of support from my followers. Their messages were a balm to the wounds inflicted over the years. But the real victory was knowing Jordan's control was slipping. His perfect world was falling apart, and there was nothing he could do to stop it. For once, I didn't feel like the helpless wife. I felt powerful, ready to fight back. This wasn't over, not by a long shot. The facade had cracked beyond repair, and now it was my turn to steer the narrative. Naomi didn't come back to the house after that night, but the fallout was undeniable. Jordan's anger simmered, just below the surface, and every interaction between us was laced with tension. He started spending more time away from home, either working late or out with friends. One evening, Lila was playing in her room, the vibrant sounds of her toys filling the quiet house. I sat in the living room with my laptop, responding to messages from my blog's followers when the front door creaked open. Jordan stumbled inside, clearly drunk. He slumped into a chair, glaring at me. You think you're clever, don't you? I kept my focus on the screen. I'm not making this about being clever, Jordan. It's about the truth. He growled, the alcohol amplifying his rage. You'll pay for ruining my life. I met his eyes, cold and unwavering. Maybe it's time you paid for all the things you've done. His fists clenched, but before he could retort, his phone buzzed on the table. He glanced at it and swore under his breath, stumbling out of the room to take the call. I returned to my blog, feeling a grim satisfaction. The next post had to be impactful. I typed fiercely, detailing more of Jordan's manipulation, painting a clear picture for my readers about the man behind the mask. A sudden knock on the door broke my concentration. Curious, I got up and opened it to find Naomi standing there looking conflicted. Naomi? I said, surprised. We need to talk she said, stepping inside. I led her to the living room, shutting the door quietly behind us. What is it? She took a deep breath. I saw your blog. Everything you wrote, is it true? Yes, every word. She sat down, staring at her hands. I had no idea it was this bad. Jordan made it seem like everything was perfect at home. 
It's far from perfect, Naomi. He's been lying and controlling me for years. She shook her head, looking up with tears in her eyes. I'm so sorry, Vivian. I never wanted to come between you two. If I had known... A part of me wanted to lash out at her, but I held back. It's not entirely your fault. He's the one who committed to this marriage, and he's the one who broke that promise. S Naomi nodded, taking a deep breath. What can I do to help? I regarded her thoughtfully. You can tell people the truth. Let them know the real Jordan. Later that night after Naomi left, Jordan returned, his anger a simmering presence. What did she want? He demanded. To know the truth, I said, standing firm. And she's going to tell everyone. Jordan's face twisted with fury. Do you think anyone will believe you? They already do, I replied, holding my ground. The blog has followers. People are starting to see the real you. His eyes narrowed, but he said nothing, storming out of the room. The next morning, Naomi's public post hit the internet, confirming everything I had shared about Jordan. The comments on my blog surged with support and validation. Jordan found me in the kitchen, a dark storm cloud of rage. You think this is over? You think you've won? I met his glare head on. This is just the beginning, Jordan. You wanted a divorce? You've got it, and everything that comes with it. Jordan's world was crumbling, and there was nothing he could do to stop it. The truth was out, and there was no more hiding behind lies. I walked away, feeling more powerful than ever before. This was my story now, and I was finally the one in control. Jordan's father's sudden death was an unexpected blow. News of the heart attack reached us on a rainy Tuesday morning. Jordan reacted with immediate urgency, packing a suitcase and rushing out the door without a second glance. Take care of Leila, he barked as though she was my job alone as usual. I didn't respond, just watched him go. This was an opportunity. Jordan's father had always been kind to me, understanding and supportive despite his son's flaws. A few days later, Jordan returned home with a grim expression. We need to go over some paperwork, he said. The will is being read tomorrow and you have to be there. The next day, we sat in the lawyer's office, the air thick with tension. The lawyer, a calm and professional man, began reading the will. Jordan leaned forward, impatiently waiting to hear about his inheritance. But as the lawyer continued, it became clear things weren't going Jordan's way. To my granddaughter Lila, I leave my entire estate to be controlled by my daughter-in-law, Vivian, until Lila reaches the age of 21. Jordan's face turned a vivid shade of red. This can't be, he shouted, his voice cracking. That money is mine the lawyer continued unfazed. Had Mr. Simmons left everything to you, it would have been against his beliefs concerning how his estate should be managed. Jordan's fists trembled with rage. Vivian, did you know about this? I didn't flinch. No, but I'm not surprised. Your father understood a lot more than you realized. The lawyer proceeded, setting out the legalities, but Jordan barely listened, lost in his fury. Once outside, he exploded. You conniving witch! You had something to do with this, I kept my voice steady. I had no idea, Jordan, but maybe it's karma paying you back for all your lies. He grabbed my arm roughly, pulling me close. You'll pay for this, Vivian. Mark my words. I pulled away, unfazed. We'll see about that. The days following the reading were a whirlwind of activity. Jordan's bitterness became a constant background noise, his threats growing more frantic as he realized how little control he had over the situation. One night, as I prepared dinner, the front door burst open. Jordan stumbled in, eyes wild. Where are the documents? he demanded, his voice slurred. What documents? I asked calmly, pretending not to know. The ones giving you control of the estate, he shouted, tearing through drawers and cabinets. Leave now, Jordan, I said, standing my ground. You're scaring Lila. From behind me, Lila's small voice trembled. Mommy, what's going on? I edged her away from the chaos, whispering, Go to your room, sweetheart. It'll be okay. Jordan lunged for the desk, papers flying. You can't hide them from me. There's— I stepped in front of him, firm. Stop this, Jordan. You're not taking anything. He shoved me aside, but then there was a knock at the door. Jordan paused, confusion creasing his brow. I answered it, revealing two police officers. Mrs. Simmons? One asked. We had a report of a disturbance. This man broke into my home, I said firmly. He's not welcome here. The officers turned to Jordan, who looked bewildered. You can't do this, he yelled as they cuffed him. Vivian, help me! I watched as the police led him away. 
This ends now, Jordan, I said quietly. With the house finally calm, I hugged Lila tight, offering her the reassurance Jordan never could. That night, I wrote another blog post, detailing the events without fear. The flood of supportive messages was overwhelming. I could sense the end of our battle drawing near. Jordan had lost his grip. It was my time to rebuild, not just for me, but for Lila. With each passing day, I felt stronger. Jordan's reign was over, and a new chapter was beginning for us. Jordan's arrest was the turning point, but I knew it wasn't over. He'd be released soon, and the threat still loomed. I needed to act fast. The next day, I met with my lawyer, Mrs. Whitman, in her office. Vivian, she said as I sat down, we need to finalize the restraining order. I nodded. Yes, whatever it takes to keep him away from us. Mrs. Whitman looked at me earnestly. I've seen cases like this. Be prepared for anything. Back home, I fortified our security. New locks were installed and an alarm system activated. Lila sensed the change but was brave. I tried to keep things normal, but the tension was palpable. One evening, while I was cooking dinner, the phone rang. It was a number I didn't recognize. I answered cautiously. Hello? It's me. Jordan's voice crackled through the line. I hung up immediately, my heart racing. Moments later, the phone rang again. I didn't answer. Minutes later, there was a loud bang on the door. Vivian? Jordan's voice called out, dripping with venom. Mommy? Lila stood at the top of the stairs, fear in her eyes. Go to your room and lock the door, sweetheart. I grabbed my phone, dialing 911. He's here, I whispered urgently. Please send help. Jordan's pounding grew more aggressive. Open this door, Vivian. You can't hide forever. I stayed calm, listening to the dispatcher's instructions. The police are on their way, she said. Stay where you are. The minutes dragged by as Jordan's threats escalated. You think a restraining order can keep me away? I'll break down this door if I have to. Finally, the flashing blue lights appeared outside. Jordan was still ranting when the police arrived. Step away from the door, one officer commanded. Jordan turned, defiant. This is my house. You can't do this. The officer remained firm. You're violating a restraining order. Step away now. Jordan's bravado crumbled as the officers advanced. They cuffed him, his protests growing weaker with every step. You can't keep me from my own home. The police led him away, his shouts fading into the night. I collapsed on the couch, exhausted but relieved. A knock on the door pulled me back. It was Officer Reyes who had been handling our case. He won't be bothering you anymore, he assured. Thank you, I said, gratitude washing over me. After the chaos, silence settled. I went to Lila's room, finding her curled up on her bed, clutching her favorite stuffed animal. Is he gone, Mommy? I hugged her tight. Yes, sweetheart, he's gone. In the weeks that followed, I allowed myself to breathe, to start envisioning a life beyond fear. My blog turned into a platform of empowerment, my followers rallying behind me. One day, an email from a publisher named Ruth popped into my inbox. Vivian, your story is powerful. We'd love to discuss turning your blog into a book. I was stunned but excited. This could be the start of something new, I told Lila, feeling hope blossom. Meetings with Ruth were productive. Your voice speaks to so many, she said. This book could help countless others. With each passing day, my sense of purpose grew. The manuscript took shape, my experiences transforming into a narrative of resilience and strength. Months later, the book was published. The launch event was surreal, filled with supporters. I stood before them, speaking with confidence I never knew I had. Our past doesn't define us. We have the power to rewrite our future. Back home, I found Lila asleep, clutching my newly published book. Tears welled up as I watched her peaceful face. The nightmare was over, and we were finally free. I reflected on the journey, feeling a profound sense of, of accomplishment. We've made it, Leela, I whispered. We're free, and nothing can hold us back now.